We get this Lane Kiffin topic. It's a big thing. And Caleb sent it to me yesterday and my phone wouldn't work because I was on a business meeting and I couldn't listen to it. But I like, knew I wanted to listen to it to the point that I called Caleb. and I was like, is there any other format you can send it in? Because I can't hear it in my phone. And Caleb's like, no, why don't you just wait until you get to your spot and then I'm sure it'll work and you can listen to it. I'm like, but I want to hear it now. I mean, I was like that needy child. You know, I need it now because I knew that there was a potential out there for really stepping outside some bounds. And I know Lane Kiffin isn't afraid to do that. And most coaches aren't saints, guys. I'm not here to cast some dispersion on Lane Kiffin. I think a lot of the coaches in the SEC would have done what he did, but would have probably found it a way, uh, a way for it to be a little less messy. So let's go into it. The former Tennessee coach uh, has filed a lawsuit in September of $40 million dollars no, he didn't file a, a lawsuit. A player filed. No, no, no. A a, right. A, uh, a lawsuit is filed by a player for forty million dollars, alleging that Ole Miss, Kiffin, the whole group, that they weren't, um, they didn't acquiesce to his mental health concerns. Essentially, correct. Yes. Okay. So, um, now help me with this part. What does woke mean? You just tell me I, what woke means because I don't I don't want to stick my foot in my mouth, but I want to tell you how I feel. Woke means oh okay. I, I don't like to talk about the word woke anymore because it's been so misused and abused. And honestly, anti-wokeness is as stupid as wokeness was back in the day. So woke at its principle is something we should all be okay with at its original meaning, which is just awareness to social injustice, wherever it may be. In this particular case, it that. would be mental illness. Right. In this it's particular off, case, woke is oftentimes illness. associated with uh being uh, transsexual or bisexual. No, 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 not, it's not that it's a lot of times it is in this particular case, we're talking about mental illness. Oh yes. Yes. In this particular case. Now woke has been used derisively by certain people who think that people who, uh, they manipulate awareness to social injustice to go too far, to just cast dispersions on people and call you racist and sexist or whatever, if you just disagree with it. So, and that's where wokeness to a lot of people has gone too far. And, and so, Okay, so this we're not going to – Rocky Top Tom's asking me, please don't get political. I'm not. I'm going to explain to you, though, why there could be an opening at an SEC school with, with Lane Kiffin. I think this thing could blow into this. I'm not saying it should or shouldn't, but because of the woke movement, the cancel culture, I could see this resulting in a coaching change. I'm not going to ruin the show with politics. Don't worry. Just roll with me, Rocky Top Tom, because here's what – and if you haven't heard it, here's what Lane Kiffin had to say. Um, let me give the let me give yeah. the backstory before I play it. So uh, DeSanto Rollins had missed, I think, two weeks of practice, and it was in the spring. And it was a mental health break, he said. Apparently, he had been – reportedly, he had been ghosting Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin, it doesn't sound like wasn't against him taking a two-week break. Lane Kiffin just wanted to talk to him first. And, and so he finally meets with Lane Kiffin, and this is Lane Kiffin, how he responded when they met. And DeSanto Rollins, apparently, it sounds like, secretly recorded him. Here we go. Which in and of itself, may I just say, when you're recording somebody, it makes you, it paints you in a different light. Is that safe to yeah, say? It does. When you're going out of your way to record somebody, that's a little nefarious in and of, in and of itself. All right, go ahead. Tell that to Philip Fulmer. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, here we go. If you would have come here, when you kept getting messages, the head coach wants to talk to you, and you saying, I'm not ready to talk to him. What was it? Well, what world do you live in? I don't see why you have to be disrespectful, honestly. Get out of here. Go. Go. You're off the team. You're done. See ya. See ya. Because I'm... See ya. Go. Go. And guess what? We can kick you off the team. So go read your f***ing rights about mental health. We can kick you off the team for not showing up. When the head coach has to meet with you and you don't show up for weeks, okay, we can remove you from the team. It's called being the f***ing It's called hiding behind sh not showing up to work now what lane didn't need at the end of that was to call him a name and saying not showing up to work but travis says if i missed two weeks of work and avoided my boss at all costs i would get fired kid learned a valuable lesson here's my problem is why does he even have to learn a lesson if somebody doesn't show up to work for two weeks and they don't give us a phone call and they don't say hey i got stuff going on you 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 are gone and that, I, um, that to me is the, but here's the problem with our society. I'm not going to get political. 
here's the problem with our society. Lane Kiffin, and it doesn't help when there's some grainy recording of him saying a couple of things he shouldn't have. But for the most part, I was on board with what Lane said, except for calling him a name and saying he was hiding behind stuff. But with our society the way it is now, this could, could, not saying it will, this could grow and mushroom to the point that Lane Kiffin loses his job at Ole Miss and gets blackballed by college football and has trouble getting another quality job. Because let's face it, he's already got two strikes against him because of the way he's handled his career previously. Don't don't rule this out, Caleb. This is one of those little bitty things that could grow into a very big thing in the coming weeks. Okay, so I'm with you with the Lane Kiffin thing. I'm with Lane Kiffin. Maybe he shouldn't have used the words. But I, I, you, you've you covered him. I, did, I don't know if Lane Kiffin gets – does Lane Kiffin have trouble controlling his temper sometimes? I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Um, he didn't seem like a coach who had trouble controlling his temper. No, quite the maybe, opposite. I never, I never spoke to a Lane Kiffin even after they had three players arrested at the pilot for trying to steal a hamburger. I never experienced a Lane Kiffin that sounded that frustrated and that mad. Okay, so here's where I'm going to go with it. I'm on everybody's side. Lane Kiffin should not be fired. He he was 100% in the right. Agreed. Because here's but here's my thing. And there's a line here. Don't accuse me and don't accuse Dave of not taking mental health seriously because Lane Kiffin was in the right. Because here's my thing. Sometimes maybe there is a mental health issue and he needs it. If I, if I told Dave I need a two-week break, I would hope you would give it to me, but you would expect me to come talk to you first, right? You would expect me yeah. to come. Yeah. And so this is where it is. Let's not dismiss the issue of mental health and sometimes needing to take a two-week break because sometimes people need it. But even if the worst tragedy in the world happens to you, say like you lose a really close family member, you still have a responsibility to tell who you play for, who you work for, what organization, whatever organization you're with, I can't be here for two weeks. I can't be here for a period of time. You can't just go somebody. And this is where I'm at with it. I think if, if Link Kiffin gets in trouble for this, this will set trying to address real mental health issues back tenfold. Because if Link Kiffin gets in trouble for this, there will be a backlash to all of a sudden not caring about mental health at all because people will be so upset, rightly, that Lane Kevin got in trouble for this when he shouldn't have. The way you approach mental health, and this should be a protocol across the board, is we will take your mental health issue seriously. We want to do that. If you need this break for whatever it is, fine. But you cannot ghost who you're working for or who you're playing for if you're having these issues. You have to talk to the person. Yeah, that doesn't and... seem like that should even be that difficult. I mean, a text especially. It's not like he has to send smoke signals. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn, I can see better, and I enjoy life better because I can see better. Local vision service with LASIK, cataract surgery, and regular eye examination, cctis.com. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn, local doctors that care about you, support our sponsors. That's why we're here. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how Ole Miss handles this. In some ways... I know, I know it's crazy, but in some ways, I think this could be as big for Ole Miss's program as the Michigan sign stealing thing is for their program. At the end, I think it could result in a coaching change at both places. Now, it's more likely at Michigan because I think Harbaugh wants to go, but let's not forget Lane Kiffin wants to find another job that he can win a championship at. He doesn't think he can do so at Ole Miss. Yeah. Um, but it, Dave, don't you think many of the coaching fraternity and the – will actually side with Lane Kiffin on this in this specific instance. Yeah, but those are those aren't the dudes that are making the hires. Don't you think an athletic director would side? If you're an athletic director, you no. would feel the same way Lane Kiffin made. You wouldn't you wouldn't think like an athletic no. director would never expect to be ghosted by one of the people who works for them. No. It doesn't see that's the problem I've got with this wokeness thing. It doesn't matter who's right or wrong. It's the how you look. Okay, so listen, Josh Heupel was not a slam dunk as a coach as as a hire. Most coaches aren't a slam dunk. How many slam dunks have there been? I thought Urban Meyer to Florida was a slam dunk. I thought Nick Saban to Alabama was a slam dunk. I mistakenly thought Jim McElwain to Florida was a slam dunk. Those are the three slam dunks I thought in my life. And I was right on two of them. Not three, but two. And so here's the problem I have with this wokeness thing. If it's 51% Josh Heupel and 49% Carl from down the road who coached Campbellsville, and Carl doesn't have one of these issues on his his record, this wokeness issue, 
and Josh Heupel does, then you might make the different hire. I don't like let, let's stop using the phrase will because I think it's so overused anyway. It's so That's overused fine. and abused. I think it's everybody. It's totally gone down a rabbit hole. I mean, the right now is so anti-woke. It's annoying. The left does too much wokeness. Let's just yeah, let's just retire it at this point with the wokeness thing. So I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. So or the phrase. But uh, on the overall issue, if you're, you're talking about how it looks nationally and fair or unfair. And yes, the truth has no has has has, has no um it doesn't affect my judgment of this situation at all i mean i think the truth is the kid probably didn't want to play i think they moved he wanted to move to defense i think he probably felt um like he could make a lot of moves because of the transfer portal yeah players have more they have more wiggle room now caleb and i what think sometimes they use that to disadvantage I'm I've always and I think you and I both have been very much for player power over the last and that, because for, for the longest time in college football, they did not have enough power. They were they were exploited more than in any other sport. They, but I, so I'm for player power. That does not mean this level of power, though, where you could file a lawsuit and hide behind a mental health accusation where you didn't show up for two weeks. And then and for those who don't know, in the parts of the interview. He basically said to Lane Kiffin, I wasn't ready to talk to you. I'm like, I'm sorry, but you can't sit there and say, I wasn't ready to talk to you. Even if you're not say, I am in a severe depression. Just send a text. I got a severe depression right now. I really need a two week break. I can't really talk to anybody right now. Like I I'll explain later. Just something, you know? Yeah.